Helga. So thanks for joining me on Six Minute Scholar. And I'm in a different room today. It's my writing room. So let's look at Greening, which is by Kevin Young. And I really urge you to check him out. He's a pretty big deal in American poetry. And um, you'll find lots of his books and essays and uh, you know videos about him and so on. So let me read the poem, Greening. It never ends, the bruise of being, messy, untimely, the breath of newborns, uneven, half pant as they find their rhythm, inexact as vengeance. Son, while you sleep, we watch you like a kettle learning to whistle. Awake, older, you fumble now in the most graceful way. Grateful to have seen you on your own steam, simply eating, slow, chewing, this bloom of being. Almost beautiful, how you flounder, mouthful, bite the edges of this world that doesn't want a thing but to keep turning with or without you. With, with. Child, hold fast, I say, to this greening thing as it erodes and spins. Okay, so let's start with the title. Greening means coming to fruition. You know, it means like the spring makes the world green. It's the greening of the world. Or the greening of a fruit is when it's ripening. It's moving through growth phases to come to maturity. And of course, this poem is about a baby. It's about a parent talking to the child, reflecting on the you know, miracle of the child's life. But you notice that it isn't pure celebration. This poem is not just, wow, look what a miracle this child is. There's a darker thread, or maybe it's just a more realistic thread, about the pain of this world. And look at the opening. It never ends, the bruise of being. Bruise. Bruise is definitely uh, referring to some kind of suffering, some kind of pain that is part of life. Um, and notice the double Bs, bruise and being. There's a lot of little sound play moments in the poem. So he admits, you know, life is not 100%, you know, lollipops and rainbows. In fact, the next phrase is messy, untimely. So being is messy. That is, yeah, it's, it's not neat and tidy. It's not always organized and also untimely meaning surprising or, you know, it pulls you up short sometimes and it, you find that, you know, you're surprised by life, often by unpleasant things. So yeah, the bruise of being. And then we switch into the breath of newborns, uneven half pant as they find their rhythm. Okay, so the breath of newborns, it's it's a little fragile. It's, um, you know, we immediately think of a vulnerable being, a, a child, um, a little baby, you know, maybe asleep, because the breath is uneven. It's almost like they're not used to using their lungs. They're just new in a body. They don't know how to adapt to this world yet. So their breathing is a half pant as they find their rhythm inexact as vengeance, it says. Ooh. So this again is like bringing in a recognition of some aspect of the world, like revenge. And the idea that revenge is inexact, I'm, I'm not sure if he means that revenge is also messy, like revenge doesn't, maybe, maybe it's kind of sprawling or imprecise, imprecise. Um, or maybe it's referring to like the forcefulness with which the, the newborn is trying to breathe and, and you know, hoping to stay breathing, like the, the life force of the newborn um, finding its rhythm inexact as vengeance. Sun. So now the 
The parent in the poem addresses the child, son, while you sleep, we watch you like a kettle learning to whistle. I love this comparison because when I watched my own children as babies sleep, I had this a little bit impatience, like, uh, when are they going to wake up uh, so I can play with them? <laughs> or, or I'm so tired, I'm hoping they stay asleep a while. You know, so there's this little bit of anxiety watching a newborn. Um, and when newborns wake up, they tend to, to cry. You know, they reach out for someone and like a kettle, uh, like a tea kettle on a stove, you know, when it boils, it whistles. And um, a newborn is kind of like that. <laughs> um, and also, you watch the baby with a little bit of fear, like, are they still breathing? Are, are they, you know, they've been asleep a long time, let me check on them. And you're so reassured to see that little uh, chest or, or, you know, their back going up and down with their breath. You know, the, the baby is, is, is so dependent, you know, that there's this vulnerability. So you're watching, you know, watching the child. And like a kettle, because every time you put on the kettle um, to boil water, you're impatient, you're hoping it'll hurry up and boil, you know. So there's this impatience, this anxiety. Uh, I like I like that comparison. Then we switch to the child being awake. So then it says, awake, older. You fumble now in the most graceful way. And I think about a toddler who's who's fumbling around, who's trying to crawl and then trying to walk. And yet it is graceful, um, especially as they get a little more mastery. But even the fumbling is, it's cute, you know. <laughs> and there's a certain, um, yeah, as they start to actually get the muscles under control and whatever, it's it's wonderful to watch, you know, this, this mastery that's taking place. Um, so he says, in the most graceful way, grateful. So this poem has a couple of dashes. One of them was back when we said messy, untimely. And the dashes usually mean that we're about to learn a little more about what was just said. So the most graceful way, like watching that fumbling grace of a, of a toddler. Now we get a dash saying, here's my response to that. And the line is, grateful to have seen you on your own steam. So there's gratitude, like we got to see you, and there's gratitude of the child being able to do this, you know, who is growing, who's greening. Um, but gratitude, thankfulness, to have seen you, to have seen the baby growing. And then on your own steam. So steam is on a new stanza, so it's kind of a fun technical thing to, to have on your own and then steam because on your own is like to be independent and on your own steam means that you have your own power inside of you that, that drives you and then we have a lot of s's in that line with steam steam simply eating slow and now the child's eating and just eating is kind of beautiful slow chewing dash this bloom of being so this is the parents response to watching the child eat it's a bloom of being bloom blossom like a flower again with this idea of fruition the greening ripening so the child is some kind of a bloom almost beautiful how you flounder mouthful okay we have two f's flounderful and you know we had fumble earlier and now flounder. Um, so there's this kind of sweet um, appreciation and recognition of the awkwardness of children, you know, as they're getting the hang of things, as they're getting good at things like eating, like walking. But how you flounder, mouthful, bite the edges of this world. So now we're going metaphoric. So the child is biting, you know, eating his little Cheerios or whatever, but also this is him or her or, you know, this child biting the edge of the world. It's just the beginning of starting to, you know, eat the whole enchilada of the world, <laughs> you know. This being a child is just experiencing the world first at the edges and then deeper in. So biting 
uh, by the edges of this world that doesn't want a thing. And the world doesn't exactly care about the individual, right? The world, the planet has its project of, of its own, you know, I mean, life, I guess. Um, or maybe we focus on that part of what the world is doing. It's, there's a lot of life going on. And the actual planet spins with or without me being here, without this child being here. But the parent voice says, with or without you, dash with. So this is his wish. This is the parent's hope, with. And it's repeated. And the second time we see with, it's a sentence of its own. You know, capital W, with, period, with. And then another direct address to the child. Child, hold fast, which is to hold tightly. Hold fast, I say. And isn't that a very almost preacherly word, phrase to use, I say, to this greening thing? So child, hold fast, I say, to this greening thing as it erodes and spins. So yeah, maybe the world spins with or without you, but with, right? The, the parent is hoping the child will be part of this, part of this greening world, this world that's always ripening, that even as it erodes too, because there's this acknowledgement that there's always erosion, just like at the beginning, the acknowledgement of the bruise of being, but with, hold fast, hold tight to this greening world, the world that is ripening, that is coming to fruition, be part of it, be, be here, experiencing it, as it erodes and spins. So yeah, get like in spite of life being difficult, stay here, experience it, um, be part of the fruition of things. Yeah, that seems to me the message of the poem, or it's what I'm taking away as a reader anyway. Yeah, let me say one thing about the structure. This is 27 lines divided into stanzas of three, so tercets, and there's nine of them. And the number three to me is a fruition kind of number because you have one that's unity, you have two that's like opposites, and then when the opposites join, you get a third thing. So a baby, which is what the whole poem is about, is the product of a sperm and egg and now we have the greening of that union, right? We have the fruition of that, which is the child. And the poem asks the child to now participate in the greening of the world, to hold on to this world as it spins and erodes. You know, yes, erodes, the bruise of being, yes, but hold fast to be part of this blooming, this this greening thing that the world is. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this poem uh, by Kevin Young. Check him out other places. I'm going to link below to um, an audio of him reading the poem, which will be cool. And please join me again for another video sometime. And do like the video if you did like it. And I'd love you to subscribe too. Ciao.